This episode is brought to you by Zencaster. Zencaster is the number one tool for all podcasters. You can record high fidelity audio between remote locations and get studio quality sound. Go to Zencaster.com and use coupon code that entertains for 20% off for three months or 20% off an annual plan. Everything is awesome is part of Courts and Parts, a podcast network featuring pop culture, TV, movie, and geek podcasts. Check out some of our other shows like TV Ate My Brain, Let's Chat with Revelin Friends, and Podstalgic at courtsandparts.com. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I am your host, Kev, and this is the show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. And we are continuing. I believe there's been a, um, I believe I may have misspoke in one of the previous episodes that we were taking a break, but uh, we are not. We're not taking a break quite yet uh, for the Philadelphia Podcast Fest celebration. Uh, Philadelphia is holding its sixth annual Philadelphia Podcast Fest across multiple venues in the Philadelphia area, like Tattooed Mob, the Rupert Club, Amalgam Comics, and Coffee House, Fit Comedy Theater, Good Good Comedy, and a few others. So you go to phillypodfest.com slash schedule to see your favorite shows in the Philadelphia area and where they're performing and get the whole schedule. Go find a new podcast. I'll tell you what, Tattooed Moms is such a great spot. Go hang out, get a couple drinks, get some tater tots, watch some uh, podcasts. Uh, you can go to Fit and see We Got This, which we'll talk about more in just a second here. Uh, just, it's going to be a great time. It's a great two weekends here in Philadelphia, so check it out at phillypodfest.com. Uh, moving on to some other housekeeping. Make sure you support this show. You already support it. I know that. You spend your time listening to this show, and that's great. I love you for it. That's uh, time out of your day that you're spending with us. If you could spend a few extra minutes going to our iTunes page and leaving a five-star rating and review. That helps Apple Math get us in front of more eyes and ears so that more people can find the show, listen to us, and the cycle can continue anew. Uh, Word of mouth recommendations is also always very welcome. And of course, if you have a few extra dollars, you can go to patreon.com slash that entertains to support us financially. uh, Patreon is like an ongoing Kickstarter subscription. I like to describe it as a subscription service where you can sit around and uh, get our content early from across all our podcasts, including Everything is Awesome, The Ladies Who Ramp, Always Keep Out, and you can get our written content early as we start doing more videos. You can get that stuff early. So it's just a great way to support us and get early content, get exclusive content and stuff like that. Let, Let us move on to this week's guest. So happy to have him back on the show. It's been uh, a year, almost to the day, probably. Uh, Mr. Hal Lublin from the We Got This with Mark and Hal podcast. They are coming back to Philly. I'm so happy to have him back, come to his hometown to podcast as part of the festival uh, on June 23rd at FIT. Uh, They're actually doing two shows this year, two shows, one at 5 p.m. and one at 8 p.m. And as Hal says during our interview, they're two very, very different shows. So without further ado, let's get to my conversation with Mr. Hal Lublin right here on awesomepodcast.com. Sorry, my fiance just shoved food in my face. That's okay. That's delicious. What is it? It's delicious. It's so we um we started this uh, Weight Watchers. Oh, I'm a Weight Watchers. Oh, are you? Yeah, it's it's uh, how are you doing with it? Uh, good. I've yeah. lost like 50 pounds, but over like the last, it's been going real slow. But I mean, still, it's better than yeah. gaining 50 pounds. Absolutely. Like I used to be able to just stop drinking soda and drop 25 in two weeks. Right. And uh, but now that I'm I'm, I'm on uh, in a month, I'll be 34. So uh, I guess when you. What'd you say? I said Mazel Tov. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I guess when you hit your 30s, you just don't lose weight anymore. True. So, yes. So <laughs> we, did, we did this. And um, our um, my fiance's stepmom gave us this thing where it's uh, you get uh, like a ton of plain Greek yogurt, like just the big jar of it. Mm-hmm. 
you blend it with just the uh, vanilla pudding from Jello. Um, I don't know if it's like sugar free or whatever. I assume it is. You you blend okay. it with that, and you use some sort of sweetener, Truvia or something like that. Um, like just a tablespoon of that, and, and you blend it up together. And then we it, it was a little uneven the the sweetness to it. So she just as, as I started the um, Zencaster here, she stirred it all up. Uh, so it was a nice even blend, and it's uh, it's pretty good. I don't like Greek yogurt at all, but this tastes delicious. Is it zero points? I think it's like a like a it's one point, but for like a lot. Like a I, I would have to get the exact measurement, uh, but I think oh. it's like a quarter of the and the container is like like I need you you, you if you were walking around with it for a while, you would need two hands. Like it's it's like probably like a sixty four ounce tub or something like that. Oh wow! And I think twenty, like a quarter of that, is one point. I think. Wow. But it's yeah, it's it's and like uh, apparently, uh, like it's a like it's a good breakfast filler. Damn. She yeah, shoot me over that recipe for sure. Oh, I will. I I will find the official recipe for you and let you know. <laughs> yeah. It's for me now. Th- I'll be uh, this Thursday. Will be two weeks for me. Good job. Uh, and. And, and it's, and it's, it's going good. Like uh, it's, and I, for me, I'm a dummy. Like <laughs> I just need someone <laughs> to tell me how to eat and like how to eat right. Yeah. And we, that's like the, 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 I, we signed up for the online app. So like, all I have to do is like, you know, just calculate the points and, and yep. that's all I need. I, it's, I need someone to tell me what to do and how much of it I can eat and I'm good. I do the exact same thing. I don't, I don't want to go to meetings. I don't want, like, I'm happy for everybody who's on their journey, but I, I'm busy. I can't, I don't, Yeah. psychologically, it just doesn't, I just want to do it. I just yeah. want to do it. That's it. Well, and I'm doing the meetings. I'm going to the meetings as well, but oh, nice. uh, that's, that's simply like, and my fiance, she's a teacher. So, uh, mm-hmm. she, her last day with the kids was today. Uh, she has a, a, another day uh, of just teachers. She's off for a couple of days and then she's going to go do whatever teachers do uh, with, with extra work days that they have at the school. Right. But uh, so we've been going Thursday nights and the, the guy we have, he's he's a nice guy. But like there's nothing. Uh, Jen's mom also goes to the meetings, but she goes on Thursday mornings. Uh, and she's like, yeah, like they talk about this, this, and this, and it's all super helpful, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, <laughs> our dude told, told us about like, uh, a story about his wife and kids and then grandkids. And, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants someone to talk to. He doesn't really care if you lose any weight. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. So we, so, so she's going to start going to the Thursday morning ones now that she's going to have off most Thursdays. Uh, right. And I'm just going to, I like going because I know that I'm going to the same scale. I'm wearing relatively the same clothes. So I have the same amount of extra weight on me. So I kind of know that this is an accurate weight loss measurement um, for now. And then once I feel like once I, I hit a goal or whatever, or I feel right. comfortable, then I'm just going to like online only is fine for me. That's great. Good for you. That's awesome. And, I, and I'm excited like that. Very happy for you. Thank you. And and it's great that yeah. you lost 50 pounds on it over the course of how long did you say you were doing it? Like a year. Okay. I've been doing yeah. it for about a year. It's been slow. I you know, the first time I did it, I did it back in like like 2005 where when I was 28 years old and and uh completely invulnerable and I lost like 65 pounds in four months okay like yeah. I just, it, or five months like it was gone it was so fast and I, and I had nothing I was like Mr. Bohemian lifestyle so no job like it was just all I my only preoccupation outside of whatever show I was doing at the time was lose weight drink a ton of water eat the same foods over and over and over again uh, this time it's more ch- you know the more stress there is in your life and the more mm activities you have to do the harder it becomes to 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 stay with it and so that's been my struggle this time yeah um but you know overall net loss and it's if you treat it like a marathon and know that you know sometimes you'll have some weeks that are better than others Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. it's okay yeah well and that's like so that's the thing that um 
I kind of like I beat myself up the other night because I was like, oh, man, we, we, we went to the movies and I rarely even when we go to the movies. I rarely get anything to eat anyway, because like it's expensive to buy concessions. And but I was like, I really want some pretzel nuggets. And like they, I, I did the calculator thing and like they ended up being 14 points or something like that. And yeah. And by the time we were going, like I, all I had was maybe like ten points left, and you get the weekly points and whatnot. And and my fiance was like, "Listen, this isn't you're not on a diet. Like you're doing this to just like be healthier. So if you go over, like who cares? Like it's you're not going to do it all the time. So like right. that's the mindset that like I'm slowly getting into with with this is that like it's not about a temporary solution. Like it's about permanently kind of finding like my my healthy weight and not eating 17 tacos in one seat and sitting, you know, it's, it's, I can, exactly. I can do two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's, um, everything that we've been eating, like we've been finding the alternatives, like that, that have less points or zero points, like the, like the turkey burgers. And we actually, I just had for the first time tonight, uh, a salmon burger and it was like, it's all delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. What, what you can use as like uh, uh, what the substitutes are, the analogs, yeah. uh, you know, all of those. Uh, you can you can get very creative, yeah, uh, with it yeah. for sure. I wonder at what point people are gonna wonder if this is like a fitness podcast all of a sudden and, and a healthy. I, <laughs> listen, we I, if there's nobody better equipped to give fitness information than me, I'm so glad you had me on to get, <laughs> just impart all of my knowledge about healthy diet. Because, you know, I get like a grifter with Weight Watchers where I'm okay. like, how can I Ocean's Eleven my way into some pizza? <laughs> how do I how do I finagle this system so that I can? And it's not it's not good. It's no. not it's not. Listen, all the kids out there who are on Weight Watchers. Listen to Uncle Hal when I tell <laughs> you, just, you know, take it easy. It's yeah. it's OK. It's, yeah. it's it, like you, you you point out, Kevin, very rightly that it's about learning a new healthier yeah. lifestyle it is not about a diet it is about a lifestyle evolution and yeah. evolution take time so be easier on yourself yeah that's and that's my advice my my biggest struggle and it actually hasn't been a huge struggle but i thought it was going to be is is coffee uh because mm. i am uh i like i like my coffee to taste like candy um and, and that's like <laughs> that is like my biggest sweet like i'm not a big candy guy every now and then i'll eat candy it's like it's ice cream. Um, if like there's a carton of ice cream in the house, like I go crazy over it. Uh, right. And and uh, those lattes at, at Dunkin', I like a nice caramel latte with sugar, mm-hmm. which I'm sure means I'm just adding extra sugar to whatever they they put in it. Uh, yeah. And it's and it's I looked it up uh, like day two just because I was curious. And like the, for people that aren't on Weight Watchers, the the lowest amount of points you can have, and the ultimate goal for you to get down to is twenty three points or something. I think it's twenty three. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a large Dunkin' hot latte caramel with sugar. Is twenty three points? I looked at that. I was like, oh my god, I that's how unhealthy this is. Listen, that means that your goal in Weight Watchers is to get down to the point where you're having nothing but a caramel uh, macchiato every day. <laughs> Yeah. That's all you need to live, and that's 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 what we're talking about. This evolution, people. Uh, Mar- Mark will tell you, my my uh, my podcasting partner, Mark, will tell you that I will only have coffee if it's in milkshake form. I can only have like a frappuccino. That's yeah. it, because I can't, I can't, I'm, I don't ever have caffeine otherwise. I never drink soda. I've mm-hmm. never really been a coffee guy, like nothing like that. So I it. The the cafe like the taste of it just immediately adds like headache and stomach problems. But if it's like a frappuccino, something like that, then I'm I'm good to go. I can get through somehow. Well, I've, I've stomach through it. And that's what I've discovered is like cutting. And I've I've cut out sugar from my coffee a long time ago. I was just using like pretty much like a fifty percent French vanilla creamer mix with coffee, uh, and it turns out that's really bad for you too. Because uh, <laughs> like now I use what they reckon. Like I use whatever the serving size is per cup of coffee that I that I I put in my cup, and uh-huh. it, all it does is make it a uh, from black to like a. a a dark brown uh and it makes it just taste um <laughs> like coffee still like there's no there's a hint of french vanilla <laughs> so like it's home coffee and and just like the for for those out there that are that trying to find like a low 
calorie, low sugar uh, alternative to coffee beside and have flavor aside from black. I found, and you'll appreciate this being an, an East Coaster, is mm-hmm. Wawa's coffee, their lattes. They have a, a low sugar caramel latte. And the trick is you get almond milk, which cuts the points down even further. And at least it gives it like mm-hmm. some sort of a little bit of a sweet, nutty taste. Nice. That's, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm all for anything, Wawa. Yeah. I'm all for it. Thank that's, you, Wawa, for everything. I and you know I saw something online and I must have it must have been like someone be like playing some sort of joke or maybe there's I guess like a I saw someone's t- I saw, or no I saw someone that moved out to California last year post a picture of Wawa and I was like I had no idea I don't think they're like I don't think they were ever coming back did Wawa go west coast and and oh. I first, through my investigations they did not uh but like I got I got happy for like the West Coast out there because you have you guys have In and Out Burger, which is a dream. I, I I love it. But there's is there a like a good alternative to Wawa out in uh, in California? No, no, and I I wouldn't even <laughs> I, you know look here's I'm gonna tell you the tr- I want to tell everybody out there the truth about In and Out Burger because everybody will come here and want to go to In and Out Burger. The burger is good. It's a good burger. Yeah, I will give them that. Their French fries. <laughs> are not even hot they're lukewarm garbage they're so bad and here's the thing like they'll they'll do the fries properly but it's you have to ask for the fries well done and it's on the secret menu and i don't support any restaurant where (laughs) properly cooked fries are a secret that's you make two things you make burgers you make fries make the fries properly don't make me beg let me beg for you to do your job please in and out (laughs) I do agree uh, with with everything you just said. We uh, at first time I had In and Out was like probably about ten, no, maybe like nine years ago. I was out, I was out that way. No, that's a lie. I forgot. I was out there, I, like twelve years ago, twelve thirteen years ago, doing an install for a job that I used to have. And I, I heard I heard about In and Out back then. I was like, let me try this In and Out. There's no way it's better than anything back home or just your normal stuff. And I love the burger. Like the burger is it's it's um five guys comes close uh to mm. the burger. But five guys has the best fries. Like they beat in and out fries, hands down. Yeah, I like their fries. They're they're good fries. I don't like the skin on fries. I think my fa- I think my favorites, I like McDonald's fries. I don't know if that oh, makes me yeah. a bad person or not. Uh, I, and I, I like Wendy's fries a lot. I yeah, think Wendy's good. makes a really good French fry. I used to always Burger King was my go-to fry. I don't know, and, and that's like a lot of people's least favorite is Burger King. But f- there's something about mm. their fries, and maybe it's because I just prefer Burger King over uh, McDonald's. And and I don't know. I used to prefer it over Wendy's, but like lately, uh, and I and I haven't had fast food in even before the Weight Watchers. Like I've had, I don't eat it that often. Uh, right. I can't remember the last time I had. Um, Wendy's or, or Burger King, Chick Fil A is like the go to fast food restaurant now. But, right, 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 right. But like, uh, yeah, I gotta say, there's something. I mean, obviously, I don't. You're insane. I think if you don't think McDonald's fries are the best, uh, I, they do something to them. Like, like they put some sort of <laughs> drug in there to make them taste good. Yeah, of course, of course they do. It's uh, partially the bleach to give it that color. <laughs> Just we get one whiff of that and you're under their spell. It like grabs your nose like those cartoon scents where it just goes up the nostrils and then leads you around midair. Yeah. Yes. But I, I like the fact that we started talking about Weight Watchers and now we're talking about fast food, whether we eat it or not. Yeah, it's this is the struggle, people. If you're out there and you're not in a program like this, you're maybe you don't think about food as much as I, I do. I won't speak yeah. for you. But I think about it uh, like too much. And now like coming back to Philly, it's mm. even like more – I have to w- – Weight Watchers now, I have to like plan out. All right. Oh, yeah. I know I'm going here. I know it's going to be a certain number of points, but I'm I'm willing to do it because <laughs> I can't go – I can't come home and not go here, you know? Yeah. Well, and so let's uh, let's get into that before we diverge into any other topics that I'm sure we'll diverge on. So you got you uh you and Mark are coming back to Philly with uh we got this your podcast uh for the second year in a row for the Philadelphia Podcast Festival. Yes, yes, we're super excited. We're doing two shows this time at the Philly Improv Theater on Saturday, June 23rd. There's a 5 p.m. show and an 8 p.m. show. They are different shows, so you can come to both or you can come to one of them, but please come. 
don't, I don't know which one you're going to show up for, but it should be fun. It, it's you know we, I if you if you're not familiar with with what we do, mm-hmm. you, you will come to the theater and you will sit down and we will announce a topic that you will either have immediate interest in or you will discover <laughs> within two minutes you have stronger opinions than you ever thought you did. I I promise you that, and it will be a very good time. So uh, <laughs> I want to. I had a, I had another thing that I was going to ask, but I, or say, but I want to go to this first. The so your live shows because I I mm-hmm. the last year for your live show I was away uh, on vacation. I had uh, we went camping that weekend, and of course, mm-hmm. uh, I, I as soon as I saw you guys were back on the festival, I looked at the dates, and you're the weekend that I have a wedding to go to. It's like it's, of course, it's, of course. <laughs> So, so like, uh, uh, you know, reality is, is, you know, keeping me from a meeting you, uh, face to face and B seeing your show live, but your show live, do you, uh, spring the, the topic on the audience right then and there? You don't, you don't pre-announce that. We do. We do spring it. Uh, There have been times where we've let people know what it is, but I think, I think uh, it's more fun to just sort of discover to sort of spring it on the audience because then we get a reaction out of it, okay, uh, yeah, which is yeah. sort of what happened last year. We're like, all right, let's not tell people. Let's, you know, they're coming for the concept of it. Yeah. it it's it, as, you know, I don't think anybody's coming there thinking, well, finally, someone is going to solve this issue for me once and for all. <laughs> you know, I think that they're, that that's part of the fun is what the surprise is. We may do for one of the shows, we may be, do something that is completely dependent on audience topics. We've done that before, too. It's uh, you know we're still we're still figuring it out, which is the exciting part. So yeah, because now I I, uh, I started listening um, to we got this uh, within the last few weeks to kind of you know re prepare myself uh, mm-hmm. because I'm a bad bad person and did not start <laughs> after the conversation last year. I was like you know I was supposed to do this and I'm just a terrible human being who who, who listens to too many podcasts. So I said all right, I'm gonna put everything else I'm listening to on hold. And I'm going to, I'm going to start listening to this. And, uh, I, so I, I really dig the format. It's, it's, uh, and the, the Thank most you. recent one I listened to is the one where you had Mark Bernard on and you're doing a, your second round of Mar- best Marvel movie, um, yes. which, which I didn't, I didn't listen to the first one. Um, I haven't, mm-hmm. I haven't gone that far back to, to listen to, uh, it, but, uh, I I think now where why I love Guardians of the Galaxy it is a great movie I'm interested uh, I think it's intriguing I'm not interested I think it's intriguing that you guys landed on Guardians of the Galaxy as the the best movie out of the first eleven that came out uh, yeah um, well I can tell you why mm-hmm. it is uh, that was we had my father on as a guest which is amazing so. Yes, he's been he's been on multiple. I think he's been on three different. In fact, last time in Philly, he will not be in town this weekend either. Maybe you guys are going to the same wedding. That's not true. He'll be out of the country. But uh, we had him sit on stage with us in this giant throne that just happened to be there. But we did not allow him to speak uh, (laughs) most of the time. A couple of times we let him speak. But, uh, we you know, we had him on and we had it down to the Winter Soldier and. Guardians of the Galaxy, and I think at that point you you could go either way. You can make a strong yeah. argument for either. So yeah, we we wanted my father to pick, and he is almost allergic to making that decision because his <laughs> answer is always, "Well, it's whatever comes out next." Now, of course, he's right in the larger scheme, but that sort of you know the conceit is we're going to figure this out. So we yeah. have to decide on something that will either make everybody happy or everybody upset or half and half, which is more realistic. And that was what he went with when we put his feet to the fire. And so we we decided to abide by that. But, you know, once once we open the crypt on that one, it lets me poke fun at him when he's yeah. not in the room to defend himself. And what's more fun than that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I and the and I think you when listening to the, the, the updated one where you went through the next eight movies, I guess. Uh, yeah. It sounded like you were more in favor of Winter Soldier, correct? Yes, I think that yeah. that is a yeah. a. Uh, they're all very good, and I I do love Guardians, but I think that Winter Soldier is a masterpiece. I a hundred percent agree. It's it's I we uh, have been doing panels uh, at the last two kind of big conventions that came through Philly, the the Great Philadelphia Comic Con that goes to uh, Greater Oaks mm-hmm. and Wizard World. Uh, we I, I somehow they let me run a panel at both those uh, events. 
and we did 10 years of Marvel and we were just kind of discussing, discussing a Marvel and whatnot. And, and we kind of had a similar conversation to kind of figure out uh, in the matter of, we didn't spend a whole hour. We spent about uh, maybe 10 minutes if that with the four panelists right. discussing, you know, what we thought was the favorite. And the, it was for us because we included all 18, 19 movies, whatever it is. Right. The conceit seemed to be split between Winter Soldier and Black Panther, which ironically, <laughs> uh, if, if, if can we spoil uh, that's, that episode's about a month old, right? The the recent Marvel yeah. point, update, uh, Black Panther yeah. won the is better than Guardians. That that was the competition, right? Like, let's find what's better than Guardians. Yes, yes, we wanted to honor that first episode, and I, th- you know, it's it's so funny. When we discuss uh, episodes of ours with people, it's like, should we spoil what the answer is? But I think ultimately it's not as much about the answer as it is about how we get there. Yeah. <laughs> whether, oh, it's a, whether it's a straight line that makes sense or just two dopes who can't mm-hmm. can't walk a straight line. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, – and, and Mark was such a great guest. He's such a – He's a he's a really good guy. He obviously knows his way around a microphone. He's super knowledgeable about the topic. Uh, and he's really funny. Oh, um, and, and he's like so smart. Like, and yeah. I listened to him on obviously on Fat Man on Batman as well. And 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 you hear how smart he is when he's talking with uh, Kevin Smith and um, when they're either answering fans' questions or, or they're talking about whatever in the in the news. But yeah, to hear him in in a more intimate setting on your show, uh, where it, it, he's not performing for an audience. And he's just there hanging out with you guys chatting. And there's a little, you know, obviously there's some performance there, but right. um, you, like how smart and how well he analyzes things like blows my mind. Like I, I every, like everything he said about all the the post Guardians movies that you guys went through. Like I was like, yeah. oh my God, I never thought about this, like any of this. Yeah. So smart. Yeah. I love I love the level of insight that he brought to that. And what I, you know, that was a very short turnaround from asking him to him agreeing to do it because I, we, you know, I, I wanted to redo that. And then I heard that he had, he had attended that, that, uh, film festival, that yeah. marathon. And I was like, we got to get him, we got to get him on board. And he was yeah. thankfully uh, agreeable to do it. But it, it, those people who come in and are just sort of encyclopedic, uh, mm-hmm. uh, in their knowledge of things is great. That's he, he's, he's great. For the same reason that Simon uh, Gotch, now Grimm, is a great guest because he knows a ton of stuff about a lot of stuff. Yeah, I wish I like was like that. I like, I know a little amount of stuff about a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't have like a lot of knowledge <laughs> in any one area, let alone multiple areas. Yeah, just enough to be dangerous. That's all. Yeah. That's that's sort of my. I, I always want to be able to have at least a short conversation with anybody about anything because mm-hmm. I know ultimately, especially if they know more about me than whatever the thing is, that I'm going to learn stuff. It's I I love when I when I sit down and chat. Like I recently sat down and chat with someone who does a uh, show, uh, and they're going to be at the Philadelphia Podcast Festival on. Uh, they're going to be at Amalgam Comics and Coffee House a couple hours before you guys on it fit. And it's uh, their podcast is called Victim and Villains, and they are like a like a, a nerd podcast that also v- talks up suicide awareness and, and prevention a lot. Uh, That's awesome. And, yeah, it's it's and, and like every time I, I've talked to this this guy and had him on, at like the, when we by the time we wrap up the show, like he he ends it so like elegantly that i can't like i'm like listen i can't say anything else to end this show because you you just dropped all the science on you know, everyone needed to to hopefully you know look the other way or find another way besides turning to the the, the ultimate decision that 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 isn't a good answer for anybody um yeah. and so like not like and so like he's a podcaster that does what i do except like he helps people <laughs> like i i sit around and talk <laughs> pop culture and i i doubt anyone's saying whoo my life is saved, but this, this kid, and, and I, I mean, he's probably in his thirties. I don't know, but, uh, this, this guy is really like, like he does speaking events and stuff that, that are, he involves the, the pop culture nerd talk, but he also like says meaningful stuff. Uh, he's a good guy. Unlike me, I'm garbage. And, oh. uh, <laughs> but Stop. We, so, so, so we always end up talking a lot of DC, which is not mm. my strong suit. Like I'm not, I'm more of a Marvel guy. 
uh, you know, from a, from a kid on. I recently started reading DC comics uh, because I started reviewing them for another site a, few, uh, a couple months back, and right. I stuck with it after I left that site. And uh, it's so like whenever I have a conversation about DC, especially anything outside of Batman, I like <laughs> I know just enough to skate by, just skate by because I know nothing about DC. <laughs> That's all you need. Just enough to skate. We're all just a bunch of skaters, man. That's it. That's all we are. Uh, where do you fall on the, uh, the, the, and and not necessarily like when it comes to film or co- like just generally when it comes to Marvel and DC, where, where's your, uh, allegiance? I am more of a Marvel guy. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up on DC, specifically Silver Age DC, a lot of Silver Age Batman, Superman, Aquaman, Green Lantern, a little bit of Justice League. Then I got into some of the 70s stuff, a little bit of the 80s stuff. But by the time I hit like, I don't know, 12, 13, I was fully over to Marvel. And I I think Uh that's a natural progression because Marvel traditionally tended to deal with more uh, maturing themes. You know, you get to a certain age and you look up to... Uh, Superman and Batman and then you, you reach your your early to mid teens and you realize you are Peter Parker everybody's got a little yeah. Peter Parker in them trying to fit yeah. in in college no matter what your gender type like you know any no matter how you identify there's something in there that that speaks true to you and that's a really good gateway into into Marvel and I just I I, I love their storytelling I'm very excited for the the Disney Fox merger in terms of what what that means for Marvel creatively, yes, I um so this is uh, I never was a DC guy save for like the animated universe when I was a kid, like the 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 Batman animated series was was my like that and Spider Man and X Men like that was all on around the same time, yeah, uh, and I really enjoyed all that stuff. And then, of course, like the bat the Keaton Batman movies and and even my like with my dad, I would watch the Adam West stuff. Uh, but I reading and I didn't read a lot of like I, I, I think about it now at 34. I was like, I don't think I read a lot of comics when I was a kid. Like I didn't really get into it until my 20s. But right. what I did read and what I did follow and had like weird like like uh, I had this X-Men book. It wasn't quite an encyclopedia like they release now because it was like a small right. paperback six by nine thing. But it was kind of like an encyclopedia on, on the X-Men. I remember having that and like all the Marvel like trading cards that were back out in the 90s. Sure. And I just remember being a Marvel kid. And my my progression with Marvel uh, was actually like I, and I wrote an article randomly years ago for some site Uh, uh like for me, it feels like the the progression for as a fan of Marvel, at least this was my experience, was I was a fan of Wolverine uh, or no, I'm sorry. I was a fan of Spider-Man at first because like you're right, like you feel you can put yourself in Spider-Man's shoes. You can be a kid and you understand what it's like to be bullied. You understand what it's like not to fit in. You can right. be you understand what it's like to be Spider-Man without the cool powers. And then you get a little bit older, your your early teens, maybe mid teens. And, and it's cool to be Wolverine or it's cool to like Wolverine because he's got that edge to him. He's got that attitude. Uh, and he's just the cool guy that you kind of want to be or you are maybe. And then you grow up and you realize Captain America is really the guy for you because he represents yes. everything good. <laughs> it's interesting how he's become uh, sort of the Elvis of of the Marvel Universe. And I even feel like I don't remember as a kid him being as revered by other heroes as he's become even in the comics. Yeah. I uh for me, Captain America, my like I started getting heavy into comics again uh when I was uh, I was in my 20s, but it was when I guess it was I think it was 2006 when the original Civil War storyline came out. Uh right. and I, I was reading that and I was reading uh The Walking Dead, I was catching up on that. And, and they're what brought me back into comics big time. And I like barely knew who Captain America was. If I knew who he was before that, it was probably because of like random appearances he had in other comic books or in other TV shows or something like that. Like did uh-huh. not know him, did not care for him. It wasn't until Ed Brubaker, uh, Ed Brubaker killed him that I was like, oh my God, I love Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> and like, 
dove in, got a tattoo of his shield on my arm because I, you know, I, I love the character so much. And, and wow. a lot of that has to do with Drew Baker. I think I, like his, his run on cap was just genius. Yeah. He's brilliant. He's a brilliant uh, writer and a very nice guy. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. He sort of, he sort of defined Captain America for modern comic readers. And, and I think, I think that's like, fair to say. yeah. And I think that, com- uh, com- uh, not compared uh, that compliments what, or, or I guess maybe MCU compliments that uh, since it came after, but the, the, the introduction to cap in, in MCU with, with what they've been doing for the last several years, um, like he, it just cemented him as like a household name and, and, you know, top the chain, the Elvis, he is the Elvis of the MCU. Like you said. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, yeah. I, so, but yeah, I actually, I, I, I find it funny in, in uh, the world of comic book movies where you have Marvel, who I think reigns supreme on the big screen uh, DC's since, since uh, man of steel, if we're going to say that's the birth of the DCEU have had right. a lot of missteps. Uh, Wonder woman is, is the one like, like highlight that they have. I think, uh, how do you feel Agreed. about the? Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't even have to finish asking the question. I have, it's weird to me how many people I'll talk to that defend Batman versus Superman. And I'm like, guys, I, why, why defend this garbage? I think, um, uh, look, I don't, I don't know any of those people. I, I certainly would say Wonder Woman is fantastic. It's so good. And it's yeah. a good look at what those films should be, mm-hmm. but it just feels like such a mess. And you know, I, Marvel really did a very good job of laying out a blueprint of how you can make a connected universe work. Mm-hmm. And it feels like DC, and and really this is on Warner Brothers. This isn't on, I don't think DC as much. Warner yeah. Brothers puts puts their premium, their PR, the, you know, the PR line is we put a premium on creators. So we're more interested in working with directors we like than, than what the overall story is. And, mm-hmm. and we're seeing the effects of that when you – when you don't think about how everything is connected, you know, Kevin Feige keeps as tight a rein as he can on what goes on in the MCU. So if you come in to write Doctor Strange, you can tell the story you want to tell, but you have certain points you have to hit because you're you're going to be aware of what leads into your story and what your what the effects of your story are. And and that that is sometimes difficult for for a director to work with. I mean, obviously Edgar Wright yeah. struggled with that and and he left, which probably was for the best just so that he could make things that he cares about and and the MCU got what they want. And I like the Ant- Ant-Man film a lot and I'm very excited for the sequel. But that, that idea of ca- let's care about the characters. So when they finally are put together, you have a reason to be excited about it as opposed to this, this DC notion. And I know that Superman was around first and then you brought in Batman and Wonder Woman a little bit. But, I, you know, I don't know who Flash is in this universe I don't particularly know Aquaman that well. Cyborg is, you know, it's just too, they tried to tell too many stories and, and it felt like they didn't really tell any story. The, the movie feels like it's half an hour long. Yeah, no, I, and when I, I went to go see justice league in the theater, uh, I did not see Batman versus Superman in the theater. I, that was, that was so, that was marketed so bad. It, it just like, I, I don't know who it was marketed yeah. for, but it was not for me. Uh, <laughs> But Justice League, at least the marketing on it, I was like, okay, it looks like, like this could be good. And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't Avengers. Uh, and I guess now, like the longer like I I've stepped away from it, the more I I dislike it. But I walked out of it saying, all right, well, I mean, like I don't feel like I wasted two hours. Uh, but now that I, maybe I did, I don't really know any, <laughs> anymore because I haven't I, haven't, I like I won't rewatch it. Like it's not a rewatchable movie. Well, uh, yeah, and uh, like. Mar- a lot of Marvel stuff is the the Avengers are a knockoff of the Justice League, but in the films, Justice League feels like a knockoff of the Avengers. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! You know, yeah. uh, Dark Side predates Thanos. I'm pretty sure the Mother Boxes predate the Infinity Stones, and yet, the because of the way that you know they're they're both trying to not do what Marvel did, and yet they're doing exactly what Marvel did, but not as well. Yeah, and really, I, it, like I wish they had taken the concept of. You know, if Superman's your Captain America, he's the virtuous man in a less virtuous world. And it's literally a world that's not his, that he's trying to connect with. I'm more interested in that story than him having a dad 
who t- is purposely telling him not to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that angered me so much. And again, there's yeah. people that defend that movie, and I don't understand it. Like, how are you okay with this Superman? <laughs> Yeah, I can't I, I I can't get behind it. When I first saw it, I thought it was so much better than Superman Returns. Yeah. That I was like, oh yeah, he's actually punching in this movie. And some of the fight stuff is good. I don't I don't dislike Henry Cavill. It's just he hasn't had a lot to do. And no performance of Superman is as even close to Christopher Reeve. Yeah. Oh, he's, absolutely. he's such he's an underrated I I actually had this is an actual text conversation I had with Paget Brewster and I don't remember what started it but it was just the two of us talking about how great Christopher Reeve is and how great he is in Superman because he's creating two different characters. Mm-hmm. Clark Kent and Superman are two different people. Back and watch the original movie and you'll see like it actually makes sense that nobody's figured out that Clark Kent is Superman even though they look alike because they're so different in how he portrays them physically, their speech patterns it's just they're completely different people. I will say that the, I think the one thing that that I liked about Man of Steel, and it might be the only thing I liked, is that like Lois Lane wasn't fooled; like she figured it out, and 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 I think that's important because she's supposed to be this like super smart reporter, and and if if she can like believe that they're two different people for years and and like work side by side with Clark, and not never know that they're the same person, that seems like she's a bad reporter. <laughs> so that's the one thing I, I took away from Man of Steel. Yeah, I I wonder though, in a in the hands of a more capable storyteller, is there a way to convince people? Uh, you know, I mean, that's the knock is is Clark Kent is just Superman wearing glasses. But I I I I'm mm-hmm. telling you, if you go back and watch Christopher Reeve, they seem like two different people to the point where you would go, well, this, there's no way this klutzy, stuttering guy is Superman. Yeah, I mean, oh god! It's Even been, if he looks like him, there are probably a bunch of guys who look like him. Yeah. Um, well, and I, you know, that's the power of his charisma. Do, do, this is the same thing as the organic web shooters in in uh, Sam Raimi's Spider Man. When he says, "Well, I gave them organic web shooters because it didn't seem believable to me that he'd be able to build them," then you're taking away a huge part of who Peter Parker is. Yeah. He's a science nerd. Yeah. He should be able to build that stuff on his own, even if it's crude. Yeah. Like, come on, don't – your laziness is going to punish me as a moviegoer. Like, I can't suspend my disbelief because you're unable to. And that's that seems like your shortcoming as the filmmaker. Yeah, which is weird because, like, Sam Raimi is I is such an enjoyable filmmaker. Like, I, I love a lot of the stuff yes, he does. Yes, he is. And it's, it is – He's yeah, great. It's just weird that that's the road he would – like, that's the line he's going to draw on the sand for Spider-Man. It's like, nope, no web shooter. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's the that's the part that's fantastic, um, and, and that's what like I, I love. I enjoyed like especially the first two Spider Man movies. Like were, were good, and I feel like Tobey Maguire was like it was a good Peter Parker, not a great Spider Man, and uh, the the other kid Andrew Garfield. I feel like he was a good Spider Man, but not a great Peter Parker, and and that's like I'm so glad like Marvel was able to work that deal out with with Sony, uh, and and we got. Tom right. Holland, even though he's still technically way older than 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 a high schooler, like he lo- at least looks like a kid. Like he looks like a kid. He's a great Peter. He's a really great Spider Man. Uh, and yeah, it's just great. Right. And, and part of that is the writing too. It's having a team that understands that Spider Man is more than his powers. That he's a kid who's nervous and wants to fit in. Not only as a teenager, but he doesn't fit in as a superhero either. So he's insecure. He won't <laughs> shut up. And that's like what we love about him is that he's like his nervous. You know, a lot of people when they're nervous, they they joke around, they kid around, and that's exactly what he does. And it plays off so well in the MCU. Like he just never, he can never gain status on anybody he's always low status and it's my my um my my meter for spider-man is the animated series like when i typically when i read a spider-man book or when i used to read spider-man books like the voice in my head is is and i I don't know the the actor's name who played spider-man in the animated series but it's that voice just like it's kevin conroy when i read batman Christopher Daniel Barnes Chris. was Spider Man in the nineties. Okay, and and he, same guy who played Greg Brady in the uh, Brady Bunch movies. Wow, really? <laughs> that's yeah. Did not same uh, guy. Yeah, that's and now I have this 
it's not ruined, thank God, because I can only partially put the face to the voice because it's been a, a <laughs> I, I was probably uh, I was probably like 10 when that movie came out. I don't I, it's it was uh, my parents took me to go see it. It's It wasn't a I don't think that's a movie a kid says. Let me go see the Brady Bunch movie. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, like that. So so that's always my meter. And, and as much as I liked Tobey Maguire and it. You know, I watched the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. It it was the thing, uh, and I think I did watch the second one, but I, I maybe I blocked it. I, I definitely blocked it out because I don't remember anything about it. Um, but but Tom Holland is like the closest, if not like the perfect match to that animated series. Like it's just he, it's. And yeah. I think you guys said it in in your updated Marvel episode. Like it is like that homecoming is kind of like a comic book come to life like it's and that especially specifically tom holland as spider-man is that comic book character come to life the only better match is probably robert downey jr as as tony stark yes yeah that's like the perfect yeah. that, that was the guy a lot of fans would have cast before he was cast by the studio yeah yeah uh, it, he just fit that like that style he just felt like tony stark yeah absolutely and and it's and and what a payoff that that unfortunately is going to finally like probably come to an end next year. Uh, spoilers uh, for people, <laughs> for that one person who hasn't seen infinity war that yeah. I'll tell you, I don't know um, with, with if, if going out and doing like performances or public events or anything that if you're talking about infinity war and you had to hold back that month or two, but we did our first <laughs> panel the Sunday, the 29th, April 29th, the Sunday after Infinity War released. Wow. And, and we had, a, I started off as like, has everyone seen Infinity War? And two people said, nope. I was like, are you, we're talking 10 years of Marvel? And you, <laughs> and, and you came to this panel without seeing Infinity War? So we had to dance around it because I didn't want to be the, the, the a-hole that spoiled it. Yeah. Uh, it was, we made sure two weeks later at Wizard World, and it said in the pamphlet, we're going to spoil <laughs> everything about marvel don't do not come <laughs> if you've not seen infinity war uh and that made the conversation so much better because we were able to openly talk about infinity war and and the the greatness of it yeah it's uh, so good yeah i uh, there were you know we danced around it a little bit in our episode and then we had our spoiler section we were like all right let's talk about it yeah you've been warned it's it, it is um it's I don't know that I, I put it. It's I, I still I need to see it again to know where I put it in my rankings of of the whole. Uh, I would say it's definitely like a top five Marvel movie. Um, I don't know how I rank it with like the event. I feel like it, it can move in and out with with the other Avengers movies as well. Uh, it's because I, I think it's better than Age of Ultron. I'm not I, I wasn't so oh, yeah. hot on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and. To a lesser extent, like even Civil War, I had my issues with. Um, mm. the, the, and it's interesting because I don't, I don't feel like it, listening to you guys talk about it. I didn't, I didn't hear you like really talk about um, the, the villain Zemo much. I felt like like he was kind of like Killmonger where, where his reasoning for him being like a bad guy made so much sense to me. Yeah. It, like, yeah, he he. Uh, yeah, but he's more of a catalyst than the villain. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, like I, he's sort of the he's the puppet master. I would love to see him show up. Now he's got even more of a reason to mm-hmm. hate the Avengers because they kept him from doing the one thing that would have completed his mission, which is killing himself so that he can go he can see his family again. And now that they've yeah. denied that to him, who who does he become? And I I mm-hmm. hopefully we will 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 see more of that. But I you know I think the the problem that people people who don't like Infinity War. And maybe don't like Civil War by extension for the same reason is that they don't really end. But mm. I, at this point, I think of all these movies as one long story, and yeah. I'm okay with chapters of that. Same reason why I think Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie. Like I, nothing even touches it. it it's yeah. that it's so well made and it's so good that everything it does before it non ends is is to me like perfect. So mm-hmm. knowing that there's going to be more movie after it, it's it's still it, like it almost it almost just doesn't ding it enough that another movie can beat it. Yeah. And I I don't think that Avengers: Infinity War is the best Marvel film, but it's mm-hmm. such an achievement 
the yeah. way that they balanced all those characters. And it's so like I, I saw it four times in the theater and I now I'm waiting because I think it comes out on digital at the end of July. And I'm like, can't wait for it to come out so I can watch it like 20 more times and just dissect it. There's so much to, to see and digest that I think you could watch it a hundred times and find something new every time you see it. Yeah, I saw it twice in theater and it's like the first go around. I had a lot of issues with uh, I think you guys called it the snapshot. I've heard the snapping. Uh, yes. But the like I had a lot of issues. What what the, with with that meant, because I'm an adult going to see this movie and I know that like there's a Black Panther 2. I know that there's a Spider-Man 2 coming out literally two months or three months after the, the next Avengers movie. So there's like, like a lot of the characters that they, again, spoilers uh, that, that disappear, that, that get dusted away. I'm like, I don't, I don't buy any of this. And it's only Tom Holland's, Tom Holland's performance that makes me feel any kind of emotion um, during his dusting scene that, that makes me even care a little bit. But, but at the end of the day, like I had a hard time with that. And then the second time I went to go see it, like I was able to like kind of, you know, low, like I guess get rid of the, all those ex- expectations that I had. And I wasn't disappointed in the film at all. The first go. Around. Right. But right. I, the second time is, you know, as I'm sure, you know, is a much different viewing experience. And and I and, and I was now looking at it not as an audience member who also knows how movies work. I was looking at it as just like a uh, I guess as an audience member. Uh, but as like also like the characters, like what did that all mean to Tony Stark? What did that mean to Steve Rogers? Um, and, and it makes the it makes that movie so much better uh, looking at it from their point of view versus my own point of view. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great observation. I, and I would I think also you if you if you learn how a really great magic trick is done, it can do two things. Either it's ruined for you forever like the magic is gone or you appreciate the artistry of the trick so much that every time you see it that time forward, you appreciate the flourish that it has and the mechanics and how it's pulled off the way it's pulled out. You know, sort of like if you, if you, uh, this movie is like that for me, I appreciate, I just keep appreciating the the mechanics over and over again. I, I know watching it, who's probably gone for good and who could come back and I'm okay with that. So it's still like, I get that there's supposed to be emotion, but it also the people who I thought were going to die permanently are not dead yet. And now it's yeah. to the point where as a moviegoer, I'm like, well, maybe they don't they don't really have to kill any of these characters because they can go away and just be there as needed. There's no need to yeah. kill them permanently. So maybe they won't do that. And then and then I get into this chess game of, well, maybe they're making me think that so that when they take those characters <laughs> away, it's more devastating. And yeah. I, I, you know, you, you just talk yourself in circles. Uh, yeah, I, I've gone back and forth on that uh, myself for, for the same reasons. It's, it's, I, I, I understand why uh, none of the ones who, who I thought were going to die died in, in Infinity War. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I, I personally, like my thought, like, I kind of wanted Tony to die in this one and Steve to die in the next one. But I, 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 I understand. Uh, why they didn't do it and I and I know that there's a better way to write it and I'm sure that's what they've done to make it so that if a- either of them do die it's going to be so much more emotional to see it happen at at some point during the next Avengers movie whether it's you know middle or end or whatever but right uh, I, I, I'm also you know on board for them not dying because the, the, you can I mean I'm sure you know they may want to take a break now they may want to stop doing this now but in, in another 10 years, like who says you can't have Captain America pop up for a 15 minute cameo or something? 100 percent. Yeah. I uh, and also I read this somewhere. I can't remember where, but it was like, why would you as a filmmaker, why would you deny Tony Stark the happy ending of being married to Pepper mm-hmm. and having a child? What do you accomplish from a storytelling perspective from denying them that? like how terrible the world is because that just sends reverberations everywhere. But maybe again, maybe that's the point they've earned my trust that whatever they do will have a long-term consequence that I will benefit from as an audience member. I I agree. Yeah. There's, I want to say it was, 
it was after Guardians. I was just like, all right, Marvel can just do whatever they want. And I, I just trust them now. Like they, they made yeah. this movie. I, I didn't know who the Guardians were until they announced that movie. And I had and I went and did the research. So like Marvel always have my trust. I feel like at least when it comes to the films, they really haven't had a misstep at all. Uh, right. I mean, there's certainly movies that aren't as good. Uh, the Dark World being one of them. But I, yep. <laughs> I rewatched it. I rewatched it when I was trying to. I, in a week, I tried to watch all of them leading up to Avengers: Infinity Wars. Spoiler: I did not succeed in that. <laughs> um, but I, I did watch uh, the week before uh, I saw the movie. I did watch Phase One, and the week after, I did watch Phase Two, or m- half of Phase Two at least. I think I'm still catching up on that. And Thor: Dark World, while not a great movie, uh, it's still, it's still. I don't know. I still enjoyed. Well, it's a good movie to watch maybe every decade, <laughs> every 12, every 10 years. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to, <laughs> to start on. Uh, but no more at than least that. It, yeah, no more than that. Um, I, I have, I want uh, to, I want to touch on at least two more things before we run out of time here. Uh, we talked a lot about the big screen. How do you feel about what, you know, the Marvel DC world when it comes to small green, uh, small, green, small screen? I am behind on the flash by like a full, I haven't watched any of this season and I watched all the other seasons so far and I've really enjoyed it. Legends of tomorrow. I tapped out after about four episodes. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Arrow had me for, cause I, cause I was watching it. I was like, this is going to get good. And then another part of my brain went, you know what? You know what you don't have to do? Keep watching this. If you're not enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> I liked a little bit of Supergirl. I watched it when it was on CBS. I liked it okay. I liked Arrow before it, it felt like it was getting convoluted. Um, so, so I do like DC stuff. I thought I think Grant Gustin is a great Flash. It, yeah. it blows my mind that they didn't. And I liked Ezra Miller. I like Ezra Miller a lot as an actor. I thought he was a good Flash too. But again, this is the disconnect with the DCEU as a whole that we're supposed to. There are like two different versions of the Flash, and it's it, it's just bizarre. Well, and and on that comment, like originally it was because, oh, we're going a different direction than what what that flash is on CW. But at the I don't know about you. When I watched the flash, I was like, I don't know. Or when I watched Justice League, I was like, I don't know. That's kind of just like the flash that I see on the CW, except played by somebody else. Like he wasn't a serious yeah. take. He was still goofy. And I, I, I'd, I'd say that Grant Gustin's flash is more serious than Ezra Miller's. Oh, for sure. For sure he is. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, on the Marvel side, I really like Daredevil. I love Jessica Jones. I thought Luke Cage was was really, really good. The Defenders was not great. Iron Fist was not great. Mm-hmm. Punisher, I have like, at a certain point, I was like, oh, I only have three episodes left. And then I saw I had five, and I haven't watched any since. <laughs> I need to finish it. Uh, and Jessica Jones, I just haven't made the time to to sit and watch all of season two of Je- Jessica Jones. Yeah. But overall, I, I I enjoy those two. I stopped watching Agents of Shield after season I think three, three or uh, four. Same here, same here. Yeah. And I heard it got I heard it got good. I'm glad it's still going. You know, I'm always happy that people are working and stuff, even if I'm not yeah. watching and enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I think it's they're. they're I might give DC the edge on TV, but I, I, I know we're running short on time. I have a couple questions for you, if okay. I may. Yes. All right. Number uh, – oh, we'll, we'll start with one. Uh, what did you think of The Last Jedi? This is more of a bellwether question. Oh, my God. I uh... – <sighs> You know, I wanted to talk about these things with you, uh, so this, I'm glad you brought this up. Uh, Last Jedi, I actually I, I enjoyed. Um, I I can see the argument of of not liking it, but I don't know. Th- there's there's a lot of things to like there. Um, I I enjoyed that it was kind of a contained story. Um, I had my issues uh, with certain things when it came to how they handled. Um, Princess Leia, uh, I, I and and Luke Skywalker. Obviously, there was a story that they wanted to tell before she passed, and they still honored that story, which I think right. probably makes the most sense. Um, but the, I, I I think the only thing I would have wanted to see out of that movie is, and and obviously they would have had to probably use CGI or something, but there was an opportunity to have, uh, Leia, uh sacrifice herself uh on the on the ship instead of and i forget the character's name 
um, but her second in command yes. that took over. Larger. Like, yeah. Yes. Larger. I feel like there was an opportunity for, for Leia to do that. And obviously again, you would have to do some CGI work, but that would have been a nice, like great way to close her story and what she's meant to the whole universe of star Wars in sacrificing herself for the rest of the, the rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, I don't disagree with that. I, I think very quickly that this will be, a film that you look back on in 20 years and realize how impactful it was to the star Wars cinematic universe as a whole. I think it's awesome. I I loved it. Um, I would put it uh, maybe between empire and the original, (laughs) but it it only, it only ranks that high because of how important I think it is that, Mm -hmm. that not everything has to be about the Skywalker family, that there's a, that there are a ton more stories to tell. And it, it really opened up, a lot more possibilities than it closed. And I know people want that things from their childhood handled a very specific way. And I, I get that. And there are things where I act like that too, but also hopefully pe- over time, people will let that go and be able yeah. to look at it uh, and see the great stuff in it instead of seeing everything they think is wrong. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't get all the, especially like, I mean, I don't, you know, uh, the Kelly, uh, Kelly Tran, who, who played Rose, like all the hate for her. Yeah. I don't get like, she like left social media because of it. And uh, it's like, it's a, like she has no decision. <laughs> like, she's just doing her job. <laughs> like, uh, like yeah. she didn't write the story or anything and she didn't develop this character. And if you have an issue with it, don't take it out on her. You know, it's, it's, it's a greater power that's, that's controlling all of this. Uh, but I like, again, yeah. I enjoyed that. Like it's, you're right. Like it's, it's, this isn't necessarily about the Skywalkers anymore and it shouldn't be the star Wars universe. It's, it's a galaxy of people not just one family. Agreed. A hundred percent agreed. Now next second question. Okay. What did you think of solo? I, uh, I, I saw it, uh, opening night and then I saw it a couple days later, uh, for a second time with my son. It was the first time I took my son to the theater to see a star Wars movie. Um, and I, I enjoyed it. It is an enjoyable movie. I, I would happily see it uh, over and over again on DVD. It feels unnecessary though. Um, I don't know if that <laughs> makes sense. Like, like, yeah. I, do we do we need to know about Han Solo's origin? I don't think so. Uh, I, I, but it's it, it, I think as a self-contained story, um, without thinking about the implications it has on the rest of the Star Wars universe. Uh, right. I think it's I think it's a good movie. Uh, I think that, and I think I heard actually Mark uh, Bernardin say this uh, on Fat Man on Batman. Uh, I think that the idea of making Han Solo a good person, and now we have to know that, that by the time we get to A New Hope, he's not just this, uh, you know, tough and gruff t- uh, smuggler, and, and that he actually is, like, we, you technically know ahead of time now that he is a good guy, um, and he's not just in it for himself. That kind of takes away from the character Han Solo a little bit, but again, I think mm. in, in a self-contained story, I, it's it, it's a great movie. I love it. It's it's a it's a. I love what these these Marvels and and Star Wars now is kind of doing with their movies, and they're they're not just making comic book movies, they're not just making Star Wars movies. They're taking these genres and layering it into their into their in their universe. So like you have this kind of like car race heist movie in in uh, in Solo. Yeah, I I agree. I, I it's not an it's not an important movie, but it's a really fun movie. Yeah, and I I don't mind seeing more. I you know you you can't he can't be a complete scumbag in this film. There's we're seeing him start to harden. I don't think he's yeah. quite hardened yet. But by the end of this, he's killed somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, outside of just you know faceless bad guys, he's killed somebody who's a mentor to him. So we know he's willing to kill. Mm. And you know, I I would love to see more. I it's a shame that it didn't get the box office it deserved, and it, and it was kind of cursed. Yeah, I it took me a while to to be excited to see it. I didn't I I pre ordered tickets, but it took me a little while to do it because I'd heard so many negative things, and I finally got to the point where I was neutral about it, mm. and that made all the difference. 
Yeah. It's no, going that, with zero expectations. And that has, I mean, honestly, that's Justice League. That's why I thought I walked out saying, well, that was fun. Like I walked out not hating it because I had, because of my previous experiences with everything else in the DCEU, I had such low expectations that you could only impress me at that point. Um, and, and as you mentioned earlier, like, I don't think it's the actor's fault. Like every actor I think that's in, in the DCEU is great. Uh, they're just not giving anything to work with. Um, uh, and, and for me solo, I don't, I don't think I, I don't, I didn't have any expectations, not because I heard of the negative things. My expectations right. weren't there because it was, I don't like, why does this, why is this a thing? And I guess an argument you can made, why was rogue one a thing? Like, why do we need to see that story? But arguably that was like, that's one of my favorite star Wars movies. Like I really enjoyed rogue one. Um, solo. I enjoyed I had more fun with it than I, I, I think I did with Rogue One because it's just a funner movie. But I, again, it's it's you know you walk out and and it's it's a movie that I'll definitely watch. For me, uh, I had a better experience watching it the second time with my son, who has zero expectations who Han Solo is because he knows the character by name. He doesn't really remember the character from A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back or anywhere else he's seen him. Um, he and he doesn't really know Star Wars on on the big screen until this moment. So so watching it, a, I, I took my my son who's six and I took my nephew who's ten, and and my nephew is in that age range where he could he, he's too cool. So like he said he liked it and that's it. I didn't get to see emotion from him, but my kid was like in awe of watching this movie on the screen and seeing what I I, I my first viewing experience of star Wars and, and, and the big screen was, was the, when they, when he re-released it in the, I guess, late nineties, early, whenever right before the prequels came out and the special editions came right. out of the theater. So I never got a, a good star Wars moment in the theater as a kid. Right. Uh, right. So, so to kind of see that through my kid was real special. And, and I think solo will always have a special place in my heart for that reason. Um, and I'll never hate it. And I don't think anyone should. I think everyone should see it. Like, why not support a Star Wars movie, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Give it a try. Give it a try if you haven't already. All right. Last question. Okay. I The last time I was in Philadelphia, I was there to, to attend the NFC Championship game. Okay. Which was very exciting. I'm sure. What, how, I'm very excited to, to come to a city that has won a Super Bowl. What, I just is got it chills. different now? Is it a different world? Is it a different uh, world in Philadelphia now that we're Super Bowl champions reigning? It, it is. And and I can all, I can speak mainly. I'm in the suburbs. I'm in Bucks County. So I'm not in the city right. on a regular basis. But I do still to this day, we're, what, four months past winning that championship. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't dress differently. I still, I, I wear a championship hat instead of my normal Eagles hat. But there's, instead of the, the normal, like, nod but we're like kind of secretly doing it uh because we're eagles fans but we like we're we're (laughs) we're ashamed almost uh it's it there's so much sense uh you know of pride uh to to see someone um wearing an eagles gear and saying hey man what's up go birds uh this is a great story that relates to this Uh, and it didn't even happen in philadelphia uh, my fiance, as I mentioned during the, in the early in the show, is a teacher, and she's a fifth grade teacher for the fifth grade uh, class trip they went to DC. And for some reason, I was able to go. Like they're like, "Yes, teachers invite your spouses to help chaperone." Um, so I went. On our way home, we stopped somewhere in Maryland at a uh, Golden Corral for dinner. Uh, clearly, before Weight Watchers, so I I was able to fully enjoy multiple meals. <laughs> But I walk in and there's two or three people as because I'm wearing my Eagles hat, my championship hat. And there's two or three people that come up to me like, oh, go birds. And I had a 20 minute conversation uh, with a fellow Eagles fan that was in Maryland um, just about the Eagles and what it meant to the city, what it meant to us uh, personally, what it meant to our families and and like how excited we are just to be from philadelphia and and it has i think you know it's it's changed us it, it, and it's it's just made us i think it, I, I you always got the nod i think if you're wearing if you see a fellow philadelphian whether you're wearing an eagles hat or a phillies hat or a jersey or something you always get that right. nod but, but now it's like a conversation and, and you, you become best friends with somebody 
uh, for five minutes or 10 minutes or however long your conversation is. Um, it's amazing. It's, it's still, it's still, unbel- I still have to pinch myself sometimes and I still get chills talking about it. Well, that's exactly what I was hoping to hear. It's what, I mean, what was it like outside of Philly to, to be why Like, did anyone care out West? I, I mean, I had, I think everybody was happy because, you know, the Patriots had become the Yankees of football. So a lot of people were rooting against them. And so for that way, they were, they were happy. But I mean, I was here with my wife and my in-laws had come out to visit. So I, you know, I was just elated. I, it was, it was an unforgettable moment. Yeah. I, and I, I I apologize for keeping you longer than, than the hour, but I do. What was what was your mind like? How were you acting in those last moments of of the Super Bowl? When uh, when when Brady was stripped, when the strip sack happened, and Derek Barnett recovered it, I fell to my knees in my living room and started crying because that was when I knew that they that they had a very very good chance of winning. And it, yeah. that was when it sunk in. And I was just on pins and needles the rest of the time. Yeah. So it was just, I, I was almost numb because I was feeling so many strong feelings at that moment. It's, I, you know, same, same kind of experience with the strip ball there as well. Uh, the, the final seconds when, when Brady throws the ball and like, I, I'm sitting there. I was like, there's, I, I know that, the probability of this happening is, is is it's not a lot. Like he, the, the chances of him winning are are low right now, but it can happen because it's Brady. And like, I would say like the final like five minutes of the game, like I got super emotional. Like and I and like no one. I watched it with my 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 fiance, my in laws, uh, and and my kids. And and the kids were in the other room. They didn't even care. Um, but. And my fiance does not care for football at all. Uh, her mom is, is a, a big fan, and um, and then her mom, her stepdad, her her mom's new husband is from Pittsburgh, so like he kind of doesn't care either. Uh, but like even like her her mom didn't get emotional. I'm sitting there holding it back because I don't like. They're also like they're ball busters. <laughs> they're ball like I I I've admitted this on air before. I cried during the Muppets movie. Uh, sure, sure, of course. Uh, Kermit, Kermit has an emotional speech at the end uh, that 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 he gives about friendship and whatnot, and you know, uh, I, I I know it's crazy, but I cried during the Muppets movie. I admit it. I'm a man. I cried during the Muppets movie. Uh, so I, <laughs> I, 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 my fiance reminds me on a daily basis about this. <laughs> so, so I was I was holding it back a little bit uh, during the, the final five minutes of that game because the emotion of you know, just, you know, it's hard to put into words, I think, but like you understand, cause you're from this, you're from, from Philly. And I was also like carrying the emotional weight of, of like my uncle who I don't, it's, I don't want to get into a big thing about it, but my uncle who passed right. away a year and a half ago, um, was a huge Eagles fan. And like he, it, it, the only thing that would have made that moment of me watching that game any better w- would have been with him. But at the same time, like I kind of felt him there with me watching the game and, and watching us win. And it's, it's, and that's, I don't know if you watched the parade uh, or not, but like, that's something yeah. a, lot, a lot of people were talking about was like, this means so much to me because I have a loved one who passed and I know what it would have meant for them. And like, I'm, I'm starting to tear up just talking about it now. Like it's, it feels good to be Philadelphia right now. And it will, I think, you know, forever. Like it's, it's even if we don't win again this year, which I think we have a, a huge shot of doing so, but even if we don't win, like we, we got it, we did it. And it means something. And, and to have a team not be selfish about it and not feel cocky about it. Like to have a team that was just super cool this season. Yeah. It just means even more. Yeah. I agree. I'm, Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to come home. I'm very excited to come home now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you come to the next year's Philadelphia podcast fest again. Uh, and hell, you know what? Maybe we'll even, uh, find a reason to chat, 
you know, other than the Philadelphia Co- Podcast Festival, so we can talk sooner because there's so much more that I wanted to chat about today, and and uh, we'll have to talk about it next time. I, I love that this has become an annual conversation. Maybe it will become a semi, you know, a biannual conversation or whatever. Uh, but. Hal, thanks for being on the show. Uh, remind everyone when your show is, or both your shows, where they can get tickets and all that fun stuff. Sure. Uh, you can get tickets at bit.ly forward slash We Got Philly 2018. You can go to the uh, Philadelphia Podcast Festival website. The show is Saturday, June 23rd. There are two of them, 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. at FIT at the Philly Improv Theater, uh, which I think is at 20th and Sansom. Uh, but yeah, please come check it out. It's going to be a really fun time. Both shows are different, so you can come to them both. And I think we're the only Max Fun uh, representation at the festival this year. So, excuse me, if you are a fan of Maximum Fun, the podcasting network, uh, we are their representative. So come support the network and support us. And we appreciate it and hope to see you there. Yes, uh, and and make sure you check out uh, phillypodfest.com for more information, phillypodfest.com slash schedule. Uh, there's things going on from June 22nd all the way to July 1st. Uh, and, and you know what? I won't. My schedule doesn't conflict with Hal's schedule, so come celebrate. Everything is awesome at the Philadelphia Podcast Festival on July 1st. We're kicking off the very last day at Tattooed Bombs, 1 p.m., I hope to see you there. Hal, thank you for being on the show once again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks to Hal for that amazing conversation. And as you heard in the beginning of our conversation, uh, we were talking about Weight Watchers and stuff. So if you hear as I'm uh, doing these intros and outros for these episodes, you hear some wind in the background, you hear some noise in the background. It's because I'm getting my walk on. I'm getting my fit points on. I'm getting my steps up. Uh, to help with the weight loss with Weight Watchers. Uh, And as of now, as of this recording, I have lost, after two weeks, two official weigh-ins, I have lost 10.8 pounds. It's uh, it's a great little journey. Uh, I'm having success with it. I'm loving trying new foods and stuff uh, and healthy options at that. So, uh, it is a it's a fun time. If uh, you if you if you needed something, I'm not a, an ambassador for them or anything. But if you've been looking for something to help cut some weight, Weight Watchers is great. I, I never thought I would do it. I, I did it, and it's working. I love it. Uh, big like I said, big thanks to Hal for being on the show. Make sure you check out his shows at the Philly Pod Fest, uh, Fit Comedy Theater, June twenty third. He has two shows, five p.m. and eight p.m. with We Got This with Mark and Hal. His show is a really funny show. Uh, I, if you don't listen to it, subscribe to it now. Listen to it. It's it's really really fun, uh, and he's gonna crush it with Mark and their guests at the podcast festival. There's also a ton of other shows that you can go to and listen to at the Philadelphia Podcast Festival. Just go to phillypodfest.com slash schedule to find out the other shows that are playing. Like everything is awesome. That's right. We are gonna be the first show on the closing day, July first. 1 p.m. at Tattooed Mom. We are starting the opening. Mm. We are kicking off the last day of the festival, uh, and it's going to be a good show. I can announce right now that we are doing a uh, new game called Food Fright, where we're going to have four food challenges with four prizes, and we are going to have some awesome prizes like cash, uh, you know, gift cards, drinks, stuff like that. I can announce one official prize sponsor in Mind Escape. Uh, the Escape the Room down in the South Street Head District uh, in Philadelphia, PA. So check them out at mindescape.com. Very appreciative of them being a sponsor for one of our food challenges uh, during Food Fright. And again, that's going to be at Tattooed Moms July 1st at 1 p.m. Hope to see you there. Find us on awesomepodcast.com. We are part of the Core Temp Arts Podcast Network at coretemparts.com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Real Awesome Pod. You can find me on Twitter at that nerdy Kev. Find Hal on Twitter at Hal Lublin. And uh, I think this podcast, if I remember correctly, I'll have it in the show notes. Is uh, we got this tweets. Uh, it's going to be a fun podcast festival. I can't say it enough. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking through to the very end of this show. Your time means everything to me. I love you for sticking around for the whole hour and change. Uh, that we sit down and talk to our great guests, and then I sit down and talk with you guys in these intros and outros. And uh, you know what? You've been awesome. I've been awesome. You know the story. 
you know what I'm going to say. We've been awesome. Thank you for listening to the Court and Parts Podcast Network. To listen to more Court and Parts shows, visit courtemparts.com.